Father Moses Berry is a priest in the Orthodox Church in America, uh, a writer, founding pastor of uh, Unexpected Joy Orthodox Mission in Ashgrove, Missouri, a small town in the Ozarks, which is where his family is from. He is also co-founder of the Brotherhood of St. Moses the Black and the founder of the Ozarks Afro-American Heritage Museum. I was really glad for the opportunity to spend some time with Father Moses recently at the 2018 annual conference of the Brotherhood of St. Moses the Black, uh, and he graciously agreed to sit down with me for this interview. So I hope you'll enjoy this uh, episode from my interview with Father Moses Berry. When I first uh, became interested in Christ the Savior Brotherhood, it was in 1971. I'd just gotten out of the, out of the joint and uh, had this girlfriend. We lived in Columbia, Missouri. And, uh, you know, we were like little flower children. We always were. And we loved each other. I still love her. Although I haven't heard from her, hiding her hair from her in years. I looked her up the other day on the, uh, on the internet. On the Facebook, and, uh, and, I, and I thought, what well, should I call her? I said, Oh no, that would be so silly. But I could call it. She's a lawyer in D.C. now. She's a smart girl. And um, once we were always looking, we were new age people, and we we're looking for this group of people called the White Brotherhood. And you know, that was just part of our idea. We we're looking for something beyond this world. We were looking for people who could teach us something. And um, I went, I was working in a hospital in Columbia, Missouri. And she said, uh, you know, I went to work one day and there was a guy there from Christ the Savior Brotherhood who invited everyone to a Bible class at his house. And I thought he was the goofiest looking guy I've ever seen. You know, he's just like, like, you know, like Wally Cleaver or something, you know. Like a he's nice little white guy, you know. And I only say that just to give you a description of how he was. And um, I said, he said, you want to go to my Bible class? I said, oh, does it have anything to do with the White Brotherhood? Cause obviously it didn't, right? He goes, as a matter of fact, it does. I went, oh. I left work, went straight to where, where my friend was. And I said, I found the White Brotherhood. And she says, really? And I said, yeah. I really have. So I started going to classes over there, their, their place, and it was just wonderful. And we decided that we would, um, you know, we, we had lots of, lots of money. Big money. And we decided to go to Hawaii, to move to Hawaii. And so she flew over from, from you know, from Missouri. And I decided that I would hitchhike across the country. Because I figured somehow I know that I like to do that, you know, at that time. And I said, well, this may be the last time I get to do this. Because I feel like I'm going to be straight pretty quickly. And uh, so, straight as in, um, you know, it's a new, new, new terminology. Straight as in, um, you know, more mainstream guy. And that crisis of your brotherhood was mainstream <laughs> compared to my life. So... You know, I hitchhiked to, over to San Francisco to catch a plane to, to Hawaii. And I stopped by the, the, the Holy Order of Man's um, house, which is Christ the Savior Brotherhood. And uh, we were having a class there. And I just I just love those people because they, they, they were so good to each other. They were so kind to each other. You know, I was not under the delusion that some people are is that they they were less than perfect. I mean they were you know, I didn't expect anybody to be perfect. I knew everybody was flawed. You know, and so so they didn't disappoint me in that way. It never did. So that's why I loved Christ the Savior Brotherhood. Someone asked me this question not so long ago. And um they were they were a big big time priest in the Orthodox Church. He says um you know tell me about the um the, the, the 
crisis of your brotherhood in a condescending tone. And I said, I loved it be, being there because they were the best white people I've ever met. You know, just for, just to let him know that uh, maybe I didn't let him know, but my intention was to say, you know, you you are not, don't exemplify goodness to me. These other people did and still do, even 47 years later. And uh, so, my my experience in in the, in the crisis of brotherhood was just wonderful, just wonderful. I know people had had bad experiences sometimes, and I think it had to do with their own immaturity. I think it had to do with their own, you know, longing for something that and for people that were better than them, instead of the understanding that we're all the same. We're all the same. And, uh, you know, even the, the best of us are a mess. And even the, even the most wisdom, the most wise thing among us is folly to God, according to the scripture. So, you know, I only had a good time there. I only had a good time there. And I, and I love the brotherhood. And I always will. And I love everything that's happened to me in my life. I love the AME church. And I always will always will because you know these guys were talking today about the old time you know hey i'm from the real actual old time their old time is not the real, actual old time their you know their old time is the 40s and because that's what their folks were and their grandparents were mine was the old time it was mine was from the time when there were there were three genres of african-american music one was the gospel song gospel music and gospel had to do with the um, with um, the redemption of um, the people based on the gospel, and then there was the spiritual genre, which was which preceded the gospel, which was uh, you know um, waiting for the Lord to come. Such songs as "Swing Down, Sweet Chariot," "Stop and Let Me Ride." I got a home on the other side. And such songs as, uh, you know, I've got a robe, you've got a robe, all of God's children got a robe. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my robe, I'm going to shout all over God's heaven. Which, is, which goes straight to the idea of praising God in the world to come. This world will give you nothing. This world may even, might not even give you the, the vote. I was 15 years old before the Voting Rights Act passed. So, you know, when I met the people in the Holy Order of Mans, I met a group of people who were sincere and they loved God. And you know, whatever else we did was fine. Well, you know, only when you look back on your, your past and you go, this was so messed up. So people do with their own parents. That my parents, and sometimes, sometimes it's true. Sometimes it's not. They said, my parents were just not, they didn't get it. Well, you didn't get it either. You know, they look for more from people than, than they should instead of looking from God to God for their, for, you know, for their substance. So yeah, I, I I like being in the holy order of things. The advice that I would give to someone who has become wants to become orthodox or has just become orthodox is that this will cost you everything. This will cost you everything. If you are in order to reach the idea that you have in mind, it will cost you everything. It will cost you your ideas of how you think about things. You know, or else you'll be only just a mediocre Christian. You be lukewarm, and the Lord will spit you out, according to the scripture. This will cost you everything. This is not. This will not satisfy your need to have a traditional church. It will cost you more than that. This is not sign. This will not satisfy your desire to be um, in line with ancient Christianity. It will cost you more than that. It will cost you everything you have. And if you don't use it as your rudder, this orthodox way, and if you don't have 
as your rudder, orthodox dogmatic theology, then you will um, be a double-minded man, unstable in all your ways. Because that's what's required of you. You know, now there's a way to say that to someone that's pastoral, you know, and something that you lead them into, but you want to let people know that they've entered into the straight gate. And, you know, it's going to require a lot from you. That's what I would say. Anything else? I wouldn't even tell some people. Somebody called me from Los Angeles and said, "You know, pastor, priest, or what would you what would you tell a black person who is uh, you know, has been discriminated in the church?" I said, "Don't you know that's going to cost you? Then you know that it was going to cost everything you had before you got here." Well, other people don't have to to, to have experience that. I said, "Oh yes, they do." It's cost them everything. You know, what it costs you may be different than what it costs them, but it's everything. That's what I would say. That's what I would say to somebody who wants to become Orthodox. Hi again. Hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Father Moses Berry. Please let me know what you thought of this uh, episode in the comment section below. And please subscribe to get notified when new episodes become available, which happens every Friday. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.